to the Soul Station here with the Spiritual B. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right on to into the subject matter of hate. This is session two, lesson two on the subject of hate. If you remember last week, we discussed the loose side of hate and we discussed the gill side. We touched a little bit of the gill side, but what we didn't do, we didn't touch bases on the cool side of hate. We call the cool gel. That is the center of our love. Jesus exemplifies love, the cool gel. So um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna begin with um, the loose side of things. And um, we're gonna start with Proverbs 9 and 8. So if you have your book or your Bible, the book of myths and truths, as I call it. It's one of the greatest books ever. Um, we're going to go to the Old Testament, and we're going to go to the book of Proverbs, okay? Proverbs, Job, Psalm, Proverbs. And we're going to go to chapter 9, okay? And it says in verse 8, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke not a wise man, and he will love thee. Okay, so um, the word scorn, scorn deals with, according to the Webster, a person who expresses contempt or disdain for someone or something. Okay, so let's go back over there again. Reprove a scorner and he'll hate you. So if you try to correct somebody that's a scorner, have a problem with issues, they'll hate you. For bringing that truth but if you rebuke somebody that's wise that's advisable they'll fall in love with you because they know that that knowledge saves them from certain issues and problems okay so let's go to the next chapter in 10 verse 10 is just the next chapter and we're going to look at verse 18 he that hateth he that hideth hate i'm sorry let's start all over he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. He that hideth hatred, he hideth it, with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Okay, so we, 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 we see that that is pretty much self-explanatory. Because we know people have a lot of hidden hatred. And you may be surprised by the people who have a lot of hidden hatred for you. Nine times out of ten, it's people that you're the closest to. Your friends, your family members, your siblings, okay? People can cover a lot of things externally, but on the inside, they are hating you. But why do they hate you? Okay, that's what we're going to go to in a minute. So let's go to... Psalms 139. I'm getting ready to show you something, okay? But we, I'm going, we're going to go to Psalms 139. Let's go to Psalms 139. That's before Proverbs. That's the book before Proverbs. Psalms 139. We're talking about the subject of hate and different issues surrounding hate. They say we shouldn't hate. Why shouldn't we hate? What is hate? And that's why we are here, to define hate. Because I feel like, and I believe and think, that whatever you are, you should know what it is that you're doing. Whether it's agreeable or not, whether it's a dichotomy or not, you must have clear understanding of something before you can live it, right? So um, if you're going to be a hater, at least know what it is. And we are learning some of that just through this particular book, okay, through the Bible. So we got 139, and we're going to go to verses 21, and we're going to do verses 22. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Okay? And that was David talking when he was going through those trials and tribulations. He said, do I not hate them, O Lord, that hate you? I hate them. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against you. I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. So we see David's demeanor in all of this. Something's going on. And he feels like them bucking up against him is fighting against the Lord because he's in his call, right? He's in his calling. So let's go to the cool jail. Now we're in the center of hate here, okay? We're in the center of hate. And we're going to start with Matthew 5. 
Jesus is love, right? So let's see what he has to say. Matthew 5, and we're going to verses 43 and 44. Okay. So the scripture says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your neighbors, love your enemies, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Ooh, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I think that's worthy of reading again. This is Jesus. You've heard that he has been saved. Now, he's pulling this from the past. We're going all the way back to the Exodus, okay, when we first started talking about love, okay? He says, ye have heard from the past that it was saved. We're talking about a law. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. That was the law, okay? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you, despitefully use you, and persecute you. How can you do all of that? I mean, that doesn't even sound logical. To do all this to somebody that's treating you so bad. Why should I be this way with somebody that's hating me, treating me with disdain, despitefully using me, persecuting me, which to me are all ingredients of hate? But I can't hate them back, according to Jesus. But watch this. Okay, so we're going to go to um, Luke 14 and 26 first. Luke 14 and 26. We're not there yet. But you're going to see what I'm talking about. Luke 14 and 26 says, If any man come to me, I'm sorry, let's go to Romans, Romans 7 and 15. Hold on, hold on, Romans 7 and 15. I'm sorry about that. Let me get my notes. Don't you just love reality? <laughs> you know, okay, thank you. Okay. Listen to this. Now, this is going to be a little difficult, and we may be touching on this subject as well. This is Paul speaking, okay? Paul was struggling. He was struggling, okay? And it take a lot of re going back through this and really trying to understand his language to see what he's saying. But he says in verse 15, let me start with 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul unto sin. Soul under sin. So we're just going to throw that in the way. That's 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Mm. Why would you be doing something that you hate? Because you was taught something. You was taught to think a certain way. And maybe by his nature, it's something that he would normally do. It's in his nature to do it. But because he's been taught something and he sees it as being wrong, he now hates it. But it's in his genes, if you know what I mean, okay? Hate. Why is he hating that which he, but what I hate, what that do I not, but what I hate that I do? Is he being forced? Okay, so let's, 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 let's skip, let's, let's get back to um, Luke 14 and 26. Because I want you to see something. I want you to see this, what I call a shift. Luke 14 and 26. This is Jesus, the cool gel of our life. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, and his own life also, 
He cannot be my disciple. The shift. The shift. So before we get into the shift, we're going to go to this board right here. And we're going to kind of break down. So I gave you an assignment last time to brainstorm the word hate, right? We were supposed to be brainstorming the word hate. And I got it written here on the board. And I had you sit down and just put the word down and just think of everything that you thought hate was. We know it's disdain, right? We know it's disdain. I really, 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 really don't like it. Okay? What else is hate? You know, um, hate is disagreement, right? We disagree. We don't think alike. Remember, because Jesus just said that. If any man come to me and don't hate his everybody, <laughs> basically, if you don't hate everybody you associated with, even your own life, then you're not even worthy of following him. Hate is such a strong word. Why the shift? Because just yesterday you said you need to love your, love your enemies, but now you're saying hate everybody to follow him. Right? What is hate? Because... What, what I'm trying to get you to do is create an acronym for hate or a backronym. It's called a backronym. It's when you take a word and turn it into an acronym. Okay, a backronym. So we're, we're talking about different um, forms of hate, right? We have, um, let me see what I got here on my, we're dealing with conduct, we're dealing with conduct, right? Hate is mean. A mean conduct. You see what I'm talking about? So this is this is basically how I'm trying to get you to think about what it is that you're living, what it is that you be feeling, how it is that you be thinking at times when things don't agree with you or that you don't like or has caused you pain. You see what I'm saying? Because you got some people that say hate is a strong word. You know, and you wouldn't know anything unless you have experienced it yourself. It's a strong word, but what does it mean? What does hate mean since we're not supposed to be in it? But just right here, Jesus just told us that we didn't hate everybody. Brother, father, sister, mother, cousins, friends, even your own life. You didn't hate it. You were not worthy. It just, it doesn't add up, right? And that's the part of hate that we're going to discuss next week. So hopefully you have done your brainstorming assignment. I want you to continue doing that so that next week when we come together, we're going to really figure out what hate is. Okay? And I uh, thank you so much for tuning into the substation here with the Spirit to be. I can't wait to bring you the next lesson. Until next time, take care of yourself. And remember, truth is about your happiness and your health. Hey, Devil Advocate, how are you? Welcome back to the Soul Station for a September mid-monthly report. Hopefully, you've um, had a chance to, um, or that you did check out the lesson. Hopefully, um, I'll get some comments on that. But actually, I am doing your report before I actually do the lesson. How about that? So. It's Mercury retrograde. Y'all know it came in yesterday, right? So sometimes we may do some things a little backwards, a little different during this time. Okay, so um, the September monthly report awarded you a gold status read. So we're going to go and pull about eight different stacks to see what's going on now and beyond. And then we're going to end it with, of course, one of the spirit vibe. Uh, messages, oracle messages. So you have uh, external energy coming out of the first house, okay, the first house, and that house is in Aries, okay? So it says that um, the first house represents the outward presentation of your characteristics, behaviors, and disposition. The first house is where the ascendant lies. 
The zodiac sign that is placed in the first house represents your unique personality traits. It symbolizes what you want out of life and how you go about attracting your desires. The path identifies how people see you. It generates your individual level of confidence and sufficiency and can be self-serving. Its energy is intended for personal gain and the improvement of your well-being. So this sounds like work and money right there. That's your external energy. So um, maybe that's you out and about um, implementing your strategies towards finding a job, maybe building your business, expanding your business. We don't know. But internally, you're dealing with the Taurus sun, okay? Your core representation as Taurus is stable. And, uh, you know, some of you may be on the cusp of Taurus, too. So this could be very well some of your energy. Your core representation as Taurus is stable, practical, and trustworthy. You are composed, grounded, strong-willed, and can always be counted on. You prefer familiar patterns because change may be challenging for you. Your essence is sensual, elegant, and creative. You have a great appreciation for beauty, including art, good food, and the finer things in life. And I know that's true for Taurus and Gemini. Your talents are organization, patience, and accomplishing any project successfully. Through your steadfast perseverance, you can attract a comfortable lifestyle, surrounding yourself with everything you love and cherish. So this lets me know that y'all are in an energy of getting yours, okay? Basically, that's what it is. Externally and internally, you are internalizing, again, how to implement those strategies. Really, you're in Taurus energy. It's like the universe is granting you Taurus energy. What does Taurus do? Taurus is the sign of family and wealth, okay? So this is you creating wealth for your family or let's again my favorite word lifestyle as it is saying so you know how you want to live so i see that you're going to be pushing forward on that this month let's see what type of um you know, people call the ruins love or fortunes or i like to call it what kind of weather will you be weathering uh mid-month and on beyond okay until the next one all right for Sun, Moon, Rising on the cusp, Gemini, Source. You have Ingwa. I think you had this last time. You got Ingwa's again, dealing with male fertility, gestation. I think this was you. Um, internal growth, common virtues, common sense, simple strengths, family, love, caring, human, warmth, and the home. Yeah, this sounds like I'm hearing her say the come up. So this, you ready to come up. You're probably talking to yourself, all the things you're going to do, what you're planning to do. The kids are back in school. Maybe some of you are deciding to um, get a job now. You know what I'm saying? Now that the kids are back in school, or, you know, maybe they're old enough now that you can do full-time work. Who knows? But definitely um, you are on a... Um, And then it's the holidays, too. So, yeah, you're very busy. You're definitely in a, a lifestyle frame of mind, okay? You won't, you won't, you won't. So I'm, not feel, I'm not feeling like it's necessary that you won't. You want to more better, but you want to improve. That's the word that's coming out. So, what's the site word for Devil Advocates and Gemstone Source for Mid-Month and Beyond? You have unit. Hundred unit hundred. I don't know if you purchase something by the unit, or it could be your unit, like your where you live. You know how they have units, apartments. What unit do you live in? Okay, even in business. Um, unit hundred. Hmm, interesting. Okay, we're gonna leave that right there. And we're going to get on into these cards and see what's going on with that. Okay. For mid month September, October, this source, what's going on with Devil Advocates? Gemstones. Okay, so overall, you're in the Nine of Swords. Okay. Um, it's all based on this nine of cups. 
You have the Four of Swords as your expecting energy. Um, it's coming out of the Wheel of Fortune. And um, you're going to have the Ace of Cups in the outcome. Okay. Conflict and or challenge and supportive energies will discuss. You have the High Priestess as your underlining energy. This could very well be somebody online as we have this underlining uh, energy here in the Nine of Cups. Okay. Uh, this could be you yourself, you know, uh, in the privacy of your home. This could be you at work in the office, okay? But whatever it is, it's a private space. You spend to yourself. You don't be bothered. You focus on you. It's, it's where you get your answers. Underlining energy. Like, again, for some of you, this could very well be um, online, on TV, okay? Okay? And I see that. You are definitely in a visionary frame of mind, okay? Um, um, you're definitely wanting, again, this lifestyle change. You know, you, you, you're praying for good fortune, but I feel like, you know, you're worried about something. I don't know what you're worried about, you know, and that's one reason why you're trying to sort it out. Maybe you're feeling for, kind of forced into making and doing better for self, for family, for home, Um because this is definitely something changed, something majorly changed. I don't know if it's um, personal to you or if it has something to do with somebody online. This change could be... Um, someone outside of you I don't know if you are subleasing letting somebody stay with you for a while Now, I am hearing Airbnb for some of you. We're going to find out why we have this Wheel of Fortune and this Nine of Cups here. I see that you're praying about something, too. Whatever it is, it's got you in your head. Like, this change, it, it's, it's got you, for some of you, it's got you looking at yourself. It's got you going within, looking at yourself. It's like your conscious is hitting you for some reason. Things are hitting you. you. Things are being revealed to you. Things that you're having to face. It's like you're having to confess things to yourself here. And I know her. I know this energy. This energy right here, this what I'm feeling right here, this is a voice that'll pop out of nowhere and question your actions. And I don't know where this is coming from with this. Um, well, I know where it's coming from, but it's funny that I don't feel a con I do, but I don't feel a connection with your um, cosmic lineup. But I do see that you want to you want to change. You want the blessing. You want some good luck to roll through. Oh, okay. Something that you really like. The reason for this is because it's based on something that you something that you feel like you would you would go through hell and high water for it. I'm also hearing that some of you may get a message about some kind of danger, but it's got something to do with um, an attraction or something that you feel very attracted to. You know, I feel like you want to leave it alone. I feel like for some of you, it's this four swords, you know. It's like... You're attracted to the person, but you don't necessarily want to deal with them. I said I felt like it was somebody 
I was feeling like this was somebody else. And you're just like, I don't really want to be bothered with this. I got to I gotta deal with this. I got to deal with this. I got to deal with this, you know. But I feel like you've learned something this mid-month online. I don't know if this is something, an idea that you've had or... Some of you, this definitely could be um, an investment, something that you want to invest in, that you really like. Keep getting some by some heat. I don't know if this is a bill, because we are dealing with the unit, hundred. It's probably why some of you taking in a, a, a leaser, a renter. But for some of you, this comes offline. And then you're thinking about that. I don't know what was said, but you, you're getting or you did get some kind of revelation. And it's and it's and you're wrestling with that. Because you really, you really, really, you really, really need to get this out of your conscience. Because I'm hearing trap. I'm seeing trap. I'm seeing um. For some of you, it's something, I don't know if you're trying to get something across to somebody else or they're trying to get it across to you. You know, because this could also represent some type of fix. Like, again, it could be a bill. It could be something that you want to invest in to change your world around. But it's, it's definitely dealing with internal growth. And you could take your pick. Maybe all of them apply to you. Like I said, if it doesn't fit, a quick. some of you this month once you deal with that dark shadow you deal with that mirror you deal with that conscious state you deal with the error of your ways it's something here that you have to grow and something else in terms of business that you have to um, be very logical about but you have a lot to work out behind this And for some of you, I'm hearing you want to send somebody a message, but you don't want it to cause any trouble. And I wonder where this is coming from because you have really good energy about moving forward and um, taking chances on um, getting yours, you know, changing your lifestyle and so forth. You know, and then this again, this lifestyle change also could be a spiritual lifestyle change. The things that you do, you ain't going to do it no more. You know what I'm saying? Um, like for myself, um, I, I realized throughout my years, um, depending on life, I can, my speech can be one way, and if it's another way, it could be another. But I started realizing that I was slipping and slipping in places that I shouldn't be slipping. I said, I'm not going to be mad at myself for that. What I'm going to do is tell myself, now you know it's time to get that together. It's time for a change. A lifestyle change. I'm not saying that I have to cut out altogether, but something's got to change about it. You see what I'm saying? And that's good. I feel like that's the energy you're in. And I feel like in the outcome, there's a confession, um, whether it's with yourself, to God, to another person. You know, the Bible does say confess your faults one to another. You know, maybe um, this has to get out, but I know you'll feel better. You'll... I'm hearing well. So you got to go to that well. You got to go real deep. And sometimes you're forced, especially when the high priestess show up and she starts to question you. Okay? Now, for some of you, this is a change in terms of work or an offer that you're going to get. that could just literally change your world around. But I think it's got a lot to do with the shift. This could be the kind of uh, work that you've been waiting on or opportunity but um, the shift,
that you're working in right now, it, it was a change in the shift. But I hear you got some news about some attraction. I don't know y'all separated because it was, it was some, I don't know if it's sexual heat or, but it's like you're willing to take the chance. But I feel like it's going to affect you. Like, your, your, your mental energy. You know what I'm saying? You know how you just ain't ready? Like, I'm just not ready. Like, uh, like you're going to have to work through that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to work. You may even be praying on it. Like, I don't even know if I should be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know. If, but but it, it's, 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 it's good, but it's problematic in some shape, form, or fashion. And maybe, it, you know, it's just the universe putting you in the experience. Maybe it's something there that you need. Because I'm, I'm feeling like you're being pushed. Oh, these cars change too. I feel like you're being pushed to, for this shift, for this change, you know. But all is well in the outcome, you know what I'm saying? Um, you're going to be emotionally filled up, you know. Some of you that's going to got to get up real early, you know, take your nice shower and stuff. Uh, you probably get up and have on the TV, watching stuff online or whatnot. But this, this got something with you. Um, this is also your orientation, too. Some of you. I'm also here for some of you. It's based on dinner. So I, know you, I don't know if you was with a group or... You like go out for Sunday dinner to the all-you-can-eat banquets or a buffets or something like that. Something about a buffet. Okay, what's the conflict? The conflict is the devil reverse. It's you. It's the decision that you make. You made this decision. Now it's a conflict. Because shit done change. The shit done change. I feel like you're like, oh my God, I should not have done it, man. Like you're questioning yourself. That's a conflict. Did I make the right choice? Did I do make the right choice? Because it was, it was, it's major. You got the will of fortune here. It is or will be. It's about making the right choice. Making the right choice. Or keeping this commitment is a conflict. Some of you, this could possibly be dealing with some type of investment. Did I say that earlier? And this could definitely be dealing with small stocks where you get, you pay so much a unit and it may be a hundred, maybe one of the bigger stocks like your Robin Hoods and stuff like that. I, I mean, I've been on it, but I've never been on it um, just to see what it looked like. I think it's a little bit bigger than say Acorn. I don't know, but it seems like something like that, but something rolls around, but you, you learn this online. This was revealed to you. Some major change was revealed to you. And it could have been about this person. And I'm going to say this is a masculine. I don't care if it's a female or a male. They're masculine. They're masculine energy. But maybe you gave your word and then you want to change it. But this is feel like something that you have to accept. Because she revealed something to you. The Queen of Cups is going to be of assistance to you. She's going to be your help this Mid month, okay. The Queen of Cups energy. So let's off sometimes looking at deep and where you can accept help, you know, getting some kind of help. This could be mental help or maybe job assistance here. Something about the sixth sense, using your sixth sense, okay. Like you got to feel something out. For some of you, I'm here to see how you can be of, of help. We'll fix the situation. Now, this could be business-wise.
But for some of you, this definitely may be about like a, a utility bill. That's what this looks like to me when I look at your reading. It looks like, what's the root cause of this issue, source? What's going on? These are my new decks, y'all. Came up with something else. All right. So, okay. All right. So you got Val. Okay. Think of Val. Now, when I made these cards, I thought, you know, of prefixes and suffixes from the root. The root. Okay. So, um, the root of this is Latin. It's Val. You can think of names that may be of significance to you mid-month with this VAL vow or an issue which deals with work, health, and strength, okay? Work, worth, W-R-T-H, worth, health, and strength. That's what the root issue is. Work, health, and strength. That's the Queen of Cups, okay? Or her name could be Valerina. You know what I'm saying? 